Hi, I'm Joe Walker with Def Digits Guitar Lessons, and this is a video lesson on how to strum chords on the guitar. I'm going to show you a bunch of exercises that are going to culminate in this strumming pattern. So there are two types of people that are going to get a lot of use out of this video. Number one, if you've never tried strumming patterns before, but you've done some chords and maybe you've done some songs with single strums with singing, perhaps. And the other type of person is you've tried strumming patterns and they keep coming out a little bit like this. So that last thing I did was a little bit of a problem because it's not a smooth change from one chord to the other, and you probably feel like you need to get faster at your chord changes. Really what you need to do is get your chord changes in time, probably at a much slower tempo, and then build that habit and it's a lot easier to increase the tempo from there over time. So, I've got, let's see, eight exercises that I'm going to show you today, and the last one, number eight, is going to be the real thing that I played at the beginning of the video. For all eight of these exercises, I'm going to be using two chords going back and forth. A lot of introductions to strumming patterns will take you on one chord and just get you playing... <laughs> strumming pattern over and over on one chord, and then you end up with the problem that you can't switch chords very easily when it comes time to do that in every single song you ever play. So I'm going to start you right off at the beginning, take two chords and do them back and forth. So any two chords that you know will be fine, preferably something that you're using in a song right now that you're trying to learn. Maybe it's a song that goes G, D, E minor, C. There are a lot of them. So take two chords out of that that are next to each other, maybe G and D and do these two chords back and forth. Any two chords you know is going to be just fine for this. And as you get better and better, you might want to repeat all this, this whole series of exercises on different pairs of chords as you need them. So for everything that I'm going to do today, I'm just going to use G and C as an example. They're really common chords to have next to each other in songs. Here's exercise number one. For at least the first four exercises, it's going to be really important to count the beats out loud as we go. So here's number one. Seems very, very simple, but if you've never tried it, you'd be surprised at the uh, difficulties that lie within. So, the really essential part of this is not to pause anywhere in your counting. This is exactly what you do not want to do. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. The problem there is you paused between beat four and beat one, and a lot of people do that at the beginning. So you'll want to practice that and get a sense of how slowly you need to count to, to keep totally consistent all the way through, just like a ticking clock that never stops. A good way to test this is with a metronome. So I've got a metronome set to 60 beats per minute here, and that's one beat for every second, and we're going to count right along with those beats. You don't always have to practice with a metronome, but it's a good idea to use this as a test for every exercise before you move on to the next one. Then you'll know that you can really do it and you've got it internalized. Now another thing to notice about what I just did on exercise number one, you might have seen my fingers getting off of each chord early and moving to the new chord before I needed to. You've got three beats in which to move your fingers to be ready for the next chord. We're only strumming on beat one. For beat two, three, and four, you can take your fingers off and move to the next chord early. So again, that's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. As soon as you strum one chord, take your fingers off and move to the next chord. That's going to allow you to have your fingers ready and strum it on beat one without pausing anywhere. Now as you work on this and get used to it, you're going to get a sense of how long you can keep your fingers on each chord, let it ring out before you need to take them off and move to the new one. 
maybe you need to take them off as soon as you strum it and take all take up all remaining three beats two three and four to move to the next chord maybe you can leave your fingers on for a couple beats before you move them like this one two three four However you do it, the most essential thing is do not pause in your counting. It should be exactly like clockwork, never pausing, and you're always hitting a downstrom on beat one on the correct chord with all your fingers down, not one of them not quite in the right spot. Now, let's move on to exercise number two. We're going to strum on two beats now, beat one and beat two, and then we have beat three and beat four for changing our fingers between the chords. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. So again, as you get better at this, you want to check it with a metronome, 60 beats per minute. etc. So you don't always have to practice with a metronome, just make sure you test yourself before you move on to each one. And the metronome will keep you honest and tell you if there is some little problems in your strumming and in your rhythm or your counting that you didn't notice before without it. Okay, exercise number three. We're going to strum on the first three beats now, and we only have beat number four for changing our fingers from one chord to the next. Here's how it goes. One, two, three, four. Again, test yourself with a metronome before you move on. Exercise number four, can you guess where we're going? We're going to strum on all four beats. That means you have from beat four to beat one about one second to move from one chord to the next. Here we go. So if you've already conquered exercise 1, 2, and 3, and you're just fine on those, and this one's giving you trouble, slow the tempo down. You can slow it down as much as you want, especially when you're counting without the metronome. Just try to keep a steady, a steady tempo as you go when you're counting. You can go... slow it down as much as you want and it expands that amount of time between beat 4 and beat 1. Now this exercise is going to be probably the most essential one in terms of your your ultimate progression on strumming because nothing is going to get any faster than this in your left hand. Your chord changes don't have to be any faster relative to the beat. You can change the tempo obviously, but we're always going to be changing chords from beat 4 to beat 1 now. So this one, again, test yourself, 60 beats per minute on the metronome. You can go faster or slower if you want, but I wouldn't move on until you can do 60 beats per minute. One beat every second. Now, number five, we're going to start adding upstrokes. When we add upstrokes, we're going to say the word and in between the beats as we do it. So this one, we're going to count it as one, two, and three, and four. One two, and three, and four. So when we're strumming that, we're going to strum down on the numbers, and we're going to strum up when we say and. So we're going to strum up between two and three, and up between three and four. Again, that's one, two, and three, and four. So get that counting in your head as you kind of fake strum over here. And then when you're ready, maybe just start try it out on one chord. One, Again, when we start changing chords, we're going to have from beat 4 to beat 1 in order to change those. So if you were able to do exercise number 4, okay, if you've conquered that one, number 5 is going to be exactly the same in the left hand. The only difference is the right hand where we're going to be strumming uh, up strums in between some beats. So here's how it goes with, those, with two chords now. 
Test yourself with a metronome. Exercise number six. We're going to backtrack a little bit. So far we've been adding strums to every exercise to get the new one. We're going to subtract a bunch of strums from this one. This one we're going to have a skip on beat three. And a skip is basically a fake strum going downwards like this, a fake down strum. You're going to skip the strings. Just barely miss them. So the difference between a strum like this and a skip like this you probably didn't see the difference. From your angle, it should not look any different. Strum, skip. Strum, skip. As a player, when you look down at your pick, you can see the pick hit the strings when you strum, obviously. For a skip, your pick should just barely miss the strings, about half an inch away from them. But everything else should feel just like a strum. So what we want on this is when we skip the strings on beat three, we're going to want this arm to be continually going down, up, down, up, down, up. So watch this. <clears throat> We're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we took away some of those up strums, and we took away the down strum on beat three. We're only strumming on beats one, two, and four now. So beat three gets that skip, and it's a fake strum, just miss the strings, and that's very important, just keep that going. And as you get used to this, you're not going to have to think, skip the strings on beat three now, that's not going to be going through your mind anymore. It'll just be totally natural to let your arm run as a pendulum. This is your new state of rest. This is not a state of rest when you're strumming the guitar, because we want this pendulum to constantly be going back and forth. <clears throat> so again, test yourself with a metronome on this one. Get used to skipping on B3. Now, exercise number seven is going to get a little bit gnarly. Uh, it's easy to understand what we're going to do. We're just going to combine number five and number six. We're going to take number five, one, two, and three, and four, and we're going to take out the downstrom on B3 and make a skip there. So easy to understand, but it's not going to be so easy to do it. Make sure you're really good with number five and number six before you try number seven. So here's, here's how number seven is going to go. One. one is where it's going to be a little bit weird to count the beats as you're playing because you're saying three as you're skipping the strings. So what you can do here is say the strumming pattern instead. Just make sure you're saying it in time with the as it lines up with the beats. So you can say down, down, up, skip, up, down. Down, down, up, skip, up, down. Or you can skip the skip and say down, down, up, up, down. Down, down, up, up, down. It's just essential that you're saying those in line with the beats. And you're not saying down, down, up, up, down. Down, down, up, up, down. That's not the way it lines up with the beats, is it? So make sure you're really good at five and six on this, and then those habits from those are going to seep into number seven. Okay, exercise number eight. This is the final product, and it's what some people call the folk strum. So if you ever hear someone say, play the folk strum, this is what they mean. We're going to add an up strum on the end of beat four. This is after beat four, before you get to beat one of the next one. Now, your first reaction to this should be, oh god, that gives me only half the amount of time to change chords. But we're going to cheat. And it's okay to take this little cheat move, because everyone does it. The cheat move is we're going to treat our left hand the same as we were treating it before. Once you hit the down strum on beat four, take your fingers off, start moving to the next chord, and then we hit the up strum on the nothing chord, which is, I call it the nothing chord because you're not using any fingers. You're hitting the up strum as your fingers are changing chords. So we're going to hit that up strum between beat four and beat one. So here's four and one. Let's try that again. Four and one. 
I'm exaggerating my movement in this hand so you can see when my fingers come off and when I hit that up strum. So here's the whole thing. Again, it's going to be easier to say the strumming pattern uh, rather than saying the beats as you go. So we can say down, down, up, up, down, up, down. have noticed that that nothing chord in between on the end of beat four doesn't really sound bad when you do it up to up to a tempo like that when you do it in constant speed when you're going really slowly going it sounds kind of awful but when you're going at a fast speed uh, let me see if I can do this really fast it sounds really natural it sounds like it's supposed to be there because literally everyone does it and that's what our ears hear when you hear someone strumming on a pattern like this that has an upstrum right before the next beat one that upstrum is almost always going to be on on the nothing chord on just uh, open strings so it's kind of a percussive effect you don't really hear that as as a separate chord and the way I like to think about it is I hear it as the guitar breathing it's taking a little inhale before it does the next chord exhaling going okay that's everything take all eight of those exercises and run them on several different pairs of chords uh, you'll be the judge of when you don't need to do it on any more pairs of chords because you got it make sure you're testing yourself with the metronome all the way through I know I've said that before but really essential that you know that you're staying in time because if it's just in your head or if it's just speaking out loud without any external source you don't know if you're really in time so get a metronome or just google for an online metronome you can get tons of websites that have them or an app on your phone lots of those have fun see ya